what's up guys today i'm going to go through how i created this levitating effect so here is my raw video clip for this effect i'm just going to do it the easy way by using still frames the first thing i'm going to do is create a freeze frame where i want this effect to happen holding down shift and pressing h that will create this hold freeze frame and then we can just cut the video and then set the hold frame to at least a few seconds long now I need to remove the car from the frame and just create a blank frame with the background. Ideally, you want to shoot two shots, one with the subject and then one without the subject. But now using online AI, it's going to be really easy to remove the subject from the frame. So I'm going to export this as a JPEG. Click next. I'm going to use the open AI website using Dali. I'll leave the link to this website down below. So if we go to upload image, select the image and press skip cropping and then click the tick button here and move this blue frame over the subject and click the eraser tool down here and then just erase what you want to take out of the frame so make sure you get rid of the shadow as well if there's a shadow so i'm just going to type in fill that's done a pretty good job of removing the car i could spend a bit more time to get a better result but for now i'm just going to use this one and then if we go up here to this download button, click that and it will download the image. So now if we go back into Final Cut Pro and bring that image into the timeline and then right click, go to change duration. Now I'm going to cut the car out of this frame. So if we go to the effects tab and go down to mask and keying and just add the draw mask onto this. And then if we zoom in, just going to click and add points around the car and cut the car out of the shot. And then I'm going to select the ones on the top, right click and go to smooth. Okay, so now we have the car cut out, go to the beginning and hit the transform tool here and add a keyframe at the start and then go to the end and animate the car up and add a slight rotation and right click on the first keyframe and I'm gonna change that to linear and leave the second one at smooth. So now we have the car floating up. Now I'm going to create a copy of this layer by holding down option, clicking and dragging this layer up. And on this layer, I'm going to add a shape mask. So over in the effects, I'm going to add a shape mask on this and just cut out one of the wheels. I'm going to set the curvature to 100 and turn the feather down and then just make this shape mask around the wheel. And then I'm going to click the transform tool and just move these keyframes over. Making sure that they still go up in a straight line. If we go to the transform parameters over here, I'm going to reset the anchor point. Make sure the anchor point, which is this circle here is in the middle of the wheel. And then I'm going to go to the last keyframe on the rotation and just add a lot more rotation to this. Need to bring it down a little bit. So now it has like a spin as it goes up. And if you have the effects expansion pack, then we can use this extrude effect and just add a bit more depth to this tire. So now we have that tire flying up with some rotation. So now if I copy and paste this layer, hold down option, click and drag and just move the keyframes over and then also change the rotation and I'm going to reset the scale parameter on this and just make this one a bit smaller and then I'm going to copy and paste this two more times so that we have four tires levitating okay so now that we have the animation done I'm going to create a shadow so to do that I'm going to select all of my individual layers and then right click go to new compound clip click OK. And then if we copy and paste this on the middle layer, what I'm going to do is select the transform tool and just flip this upside down and then open up the distortion tool. I'm going to bring the distortion level down and go to the beginning and just line it up underneath the car. And then if we add a blur effect, so go to the effects tab, blur, add a Gaussian blur to this and then open up the color board and on the exposure, we'll just bring the exposure right down. And then I'm going to play with the opacity and also the blur amount to create a nice shadow. So now we have this nice shadow underneath. 
which moves with the car. And you can also change the distortion settings if it moves too much. I'm also going to add some distortion to this on the bottom video clip. I'm going to go to my effects and add on the chromatic distortion. We'll go, go with this preset here. It's going to add some distortion to the video, which is optional, but I like how it looks with the distortion. So once you're done with editing the animation, we can select these, right click, go to new compound clip. If you wanted to add a slight zoom to the video clip, then you can do that by adding, going to the crop tool, adding the Ken Burns effect and just adding a Ken Burns to this, making sure the endpoint has the car in the shot and then click done. And then if we right click and add a new compound clip, now we can retime this and speed up the beginning to create a nice speed ramp into it. So I'm gonna to go to around about here, hold down shift and press B. This will create a speed ramp and then we can click and drag this down to create a nice speed ramp. And if we drag out these tabs and we can also slow down the end part and it will still be smooth because it's just images. Now we have this cool speed ramp into the effect. And if you wanted to make any changes to the edit, then all you need to do is double click into the compound clips to go back to the originals and then you can change them. So the last thing I'd probably do is add some motion blur to this. So if I go up to my titles and go to motion blur, we can just add some motion blur onto this, which will smooth out the animation. Now that looks way smoother. And then if we wanted to reverse this, we can copy and paste the video clip and right click, go to new compound clip, and then go to the speed wheel here and go to reverse clip. And that will play the reverse video. And you can always speed this up. I finished this off with a bit of color grading using my custom LUT A12, which you can find using the link in the description. It's in the Explorer LUT pack volume three. And then I also use the glint glow effect to add a nice glow to this to finish off the color grade. I also added some shake effects to this to add a bit of movement. I'll leave the link to those plugins in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.